And when it was rumoured, well, we know it was true, that young Pipe was his son, we had a scene where they were just going, both going like that. I bet you're a proud father. I don't quite follow you. Well, your son becoming an officer. Yes, well, he's, uh, <coughs> he's, uh... <laughs> he's not my son, you see. Um, it's funny. I, yes. I could have sworn there was... Uh, would you mind, Orphie, just going away and getting the boots? <laughs> All right. You wait, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Why were you late last night? I'm not speaking to you today. <laughs> Everyone is terrified of Mrs. Mannering. I'm terrified of her even now. And of course, it would have been terrible ever to have seen her, but I, there was one memorable episode, I recall, when you just sort of saw her saggy shape, her, her bottom, just in the bunk above Mannering. Ooh, and that was very... That was, to me, that was one of the scariest moments I've ever seen on TV. <laughs> you wake, Elizabeth. <laughs> got a visitor to cheer you up. Not Mrs. Mannering. <laughs> <laughs> There's this terrifying figure of Elizabeth who you, who you never see, but you know uh, from Arthur's performance exactly the relationship they have with each other. I gave her a very good dressing down. <laughs> Hello, Elizabeth? He had a terrible married life. You knew when he spoke to her on the telephone that he was worried about every word he said. And a different voice used to come on. He used to go much higher. Hello, darling, you know. <laughs> Just to go right up there. Hello, Elizabeth? <laughs> yes. It was a wonderful conceit, the idea that you never see Mrs. Mannering. I think it was almost at one stage decided that you would. Come along, dear. They're dying to see you. and then, uh, quite rightly, it was decided against it. Elizabeth! Elizabeth! Well, for heaven's sake, say hello before you go. <laughs> so you can imagine, just like in a radio show, what your nightmare Elizabeth Mannering is, but you can certainly identify with, with poor George, imagine what his is. I've had a very happy marriage. Very happy indeed. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night. We are the boys who will make you think. For the first series of Dad's Army, the producer, David Croft, created a title sequence using actual war footage, showing terrified refugees fleeing from the mighty German tanks. Executives at the BBC thought this inappropriate for a comedy show, and they insisted on a change to the animated Union Jack and Swastika that we've all now come to know and love. For once, I think that the men in suits were right, because the Dad's Army title sequence encapsulates in a comic way the concept of Britain as the underdog, blooded yet unbowed barking defiance from the safety of our own island backyard. We are the boys who will stop your <laughs> it sets the tone for Dad's Army absolutely brilliant. The animation encapsulates the story of the war up till then and then this song just introduces you to a whole world. It's the most brilliant title sequence in the history of sitcoms. It very much communicates the idea of the British as the underdog. Immediately it shows the audience that this is going to be something that they can laugh at themselves. If they're British, this is the British held up for them to identify with, with all their frailties and faults. It's a very English thing, and the arrows going backwards and forwards. You know, something very English about, you know, almost this sort of pretense of uh, um, fair play. That's what's going to, that's what's going to win. They're not the sort of bravado. We are the boys who will make... You've got the Bud Flanagan song there, sort of bulldog uh, nature. Of course, the song was recorded long after the time, but it sounds like a contemporary song. It gave me such a thrill that I was listening that day at that recording 
to my hero singing something that I'd written. Just knocked me out. Do you think you are giving Mr. Hitler? Well, can't you make up your mind? The whole family could sit and watch it. There's no uncomfortableness, there's no feeling of bad language, auntie won't be upset, and grandma won't be upset. It's a situation comedy for everyone. <laughs> My memories of Dad's army was as a young boy being brought in, having tea, getting washed, and then waiting for the, uh, the programme to start. It's something that you can sit down with your grandchildren and not fear that anybody's going to be embarrassed. <laughs> As we are in now, we are in a sort of moral decay, I think. And uh, the whole tone of the programme was family entertainment, it was fun, it was laughable, it reflected a time when we all behaved very well. Give you any trouble? No, not really. An ugly mob, though. Yeah. See this captain here. Oh, yeah. He's a surly brute. Watch him. He's done nothing but sneer and smoke cigarettes. Well, that reminds me, sir. I wonder if he's got any left. I seem to have run out. All these years afterwards, um, that you were in that one, which has been acknowledged as a as a top one. It was, that was told me by several people right through the years. People didn't dance on me, you know, said wherever we go, that one is always brought up in meetings, dinners, conversations and that sort of thing. So it's, I'm absolutely delighted, you know, with that kind of thing. I wouldn't, who'd have thought it at that time, though? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Eight cotton chips. I want the place. <laughs> it was unusual. You know, even in a comedy to see this host of German U-boat people there, you know, and there's a captain, arrogant and uh, well-dressed. You know, they're very smart, the Germans were in the war, you know. And then this lot of uh, layabouts who were German prisoners of war and all that sort of thing. These were worlds apart from one another, these people. Four with vinegar, three with salt, and two without salt or Walker, vinegar. What, what, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm taking the order. <laughs> And I don't want any nasty, soggy chips. <laughs> and that lovely moment that Arthur, do, Arthur does is, um, I'm smoking. He says something to me and I just turn to him and go, be the smoke in his face. And he takes not the slightest notice. And then he turns away and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> You see the sort of... <laughs> I'd be at lunches, you know, and I have a kid of eight sitting next to me. He's been plonked there by his father. So, so that he, he has to come, he can say, he sat next to the German office, I'm sure, like that. But this boy, I remember he was speaking to me about it, and he quoted every single word I said to perfection. Yeah. I oh, am making you. notes, Captain. And your name will go on the list. <laughs> and when we win the war, you will be brought to account. You're right, what you like. You're not going to win this war. Oh, yes, we are. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> Whistle while you work. Hitler is a twerk. He's half army, so's his army. Whistle while you... Your name will also go on the list. <laughs> what is it? Don't tell him, Pike. Pike. <laughs> Don't you worry, Mrs. Pike. After a while, he'll come back to you and he'll say, all these weeks I've longed for the moment when I could take you in my arms and tell you, tell you how much I've missed you. I think we all knew we were doing a successful series at the time, but I don't think any of us dreamt that 
20, 30 years on, it would still be as popular as ever and attracting a whole new audience right across the age range. Did he ever hear the story uh, of the old empty barn? <laughs> no. It's more popular now than it ever was, you see. That's the joke. What do we do? We did it in 68, 78, 88, 98. We're talking 35, 36 years. And now, it's legendary, isn't it? It's, a, it's like a dream. The story of the old <laughs> empty barn. <laughs> Well, there was nothing in it. <laughs> the hardest thing for a successful situation comedy to do is to go on as long as Croft and Perry went on. Did he ever have said there was nothing in it? <laughs> nine years, nine series, 80 episodes, and not disappoint anyone to actually keep the quality as good as it was at the beginning, and in fact, enrich it and deepen it and make it even more intriguing and worthwhile as time goes on. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Jack and, and Mildred. <laughs> I didn't want it to stop, of course not. We, we did a, a series nearly every year. We did a film, we did a stage show. It was part of my life. It was like saying, right, that's it. You know, we've finished. <laughs> No, it's not very good news for an actor. Thank you all for coming along, and good health, everyone. Good health. Good health. Good health. We had to come to an end because David said, you know, Jimmy, they're, they're getting on. I don't think they can do much more. I said, well, let's do one last series. Don't you think it might be a nice idea if we were to pay our tribute to them? For once, Wilson, I agree with you. To Britain's home guard. The Now, um, it's seven leads. There's seven leads in it. Too many. Could be too many. We, we normally reckon four. If you have more than four, the audience gets lost. They don't know who people are. It's set during the Second World War. Should, that's kind of a unique selling point, don't know? Well, I don't know how many people know about the Second World War these days. I mean... In one episode, they used the butcher's van as a sort of tank. Butchers these days? Who knows? You know, because most people go you, to the supermarket. You're thinking BSE, bad spin? Well, maybe. I'm thinking, you know, you've got to be careful with meat, because you don't want to alienate the vegetarian audience. In one episode, this is another plot line we've got roughly sketched out, they capture a U-boat crew and have to look after them in a church hall. That's boot with jokes. I see, what you, I see where you're coming from with that. Up periscope, look, yeah. The butcher fun. loses 500 quid in a turkey. See, now, turkey, now there you may be onto something, because I think that's what this idea may be. Oh, John, I, you know, John. It's interesting, you know, look, it's got some things in it. John. It's got some ideas there. John. It's a, look, Let ten me... minute taste to take. That's what I'm going to say to you. I'm going to say, um... do ten minutes of it, and let's see if it works. How I mean, I'm not saying no, time. I'm just not saying yes. Right, thank you. Thanks a lot. Think Dad's See, army. Simple. Yeah, I will. I will. Dad's army. Dad's army. From Captain Mannering's opening salvo, come on, Adolf, we're ready for you, to the platoon's final toast to Britain's home guard, Dad's army marched peerlessly along for almost a decade. It still lives on entertaining viewers nearly 40 years later.
Run, 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 run